Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Wyatt and today I'll be teaching you how to script a cafe point system on Roblox. Okay, so before I show you how to make this script, I just want to show you how it works. So all we have to do is come into the game and as you'll see, we have points on the leaderboard that save and load. And whenever we give a tool to another player, as you'll see, it'll give us points. Okay, so now that you know what the script does, I actually want to show you how to make it. So the first thing that we have to do is actually make the script that saves and loads the points. So I'm just going to create a new script on our server script service, and I'll just name it Point System. And as always guys, the code for this script will be in the description of the video if you can check it out there. So you don't have to write it with me, but I do explain it so it might be good to follow along. Um, so the first line that we're going to say in this for the saving and loading script is we want to get a reference to our data store service. So I'm going to say local data store service equals game colon get service data store service. Just like that. And then the next variable we want to set up is the point store. We want to get access to the point store inside of the data store service. So I'll just say local point store equals data store service colon get data store and this will get the data store. This will get our point store and we'll just pass in our argument point store. And that'll load in the data store. It's not going to load it in for a specific player, but we're going to do that next. So we need to get whenever a player joins the game, so we know what player we're loading and saving for. So I'm just going to say game.players, I'm going to get the players folder, and I'm going to hook into the player added event. So whenever a player is added to the game, whenever a player joins the game, we want to connect that event to a function, and inside of that function we want to get the player that joined. Now in here, the first thing we want to do is get how many points the player had when they last left the game. If they had none, then we'll handle that in a little bit, but if they left and they had points, we want to load them back in. So we're going to say local saved points, we're going to load them in, equals point store, colon get async, and we're going to say player.userID is our argument, so we're going to get how many points of that player.userID. And the reason we're using userID rather than name is because just in case the player changes their Roblox name, we still need to load the same amount of points. But if they change their name and we're using name, we won't be able to get the right amount of points. So using userID is a lot easier. After this, we want to create a leader stats folder so that we can actually display the amount of points the user has. So I'll just say local leader stats equals we we'll use instance.new and we'll create a new folder and we'll create it under the player object. So it's going to create a new folder under player and we just want to set the name of that folder to leader stats. So leader stats.name is equal to leader stats and it's important that you guys do this with a lowercase l because that's the only way Roblox understands that it's leader stats. Um, so always just make sure you say leader stats and there's a lowercase l. After this, we want to actually create a value that will display the points underneath of this leader stats folder. So I'm going to say local points value equals, and we're going to use instance.new again, and this time we're going to create an int value, and we're going to create it underneath the leader stats folder. So it's going to create a new value, and right now the name of that value is just value, but we want to set it to points so that the player knows what the value is actually equal to. We want the player to know how many points they have, not how many values they have. So we'll just say points value dot name is equal to points, just like that. Uh, after this, we want to check to see if this save points variable right here is not equal to nil. So if the player actually had saved points, if they left the game last time and they had some points, then we actually want to load those into this points value. So we'll say if save points is not equal to nil, then we say points value dot value is equal to save points. And this will just set the value of the points to however many points they had last time when they left the game. Uh, so that's all we have to do for loading. This will load it in, but there's no point in loading points unless we save them. So we have to make a script, you know, like three lines right here, that saves the points whenever they're changed. So we're going to use that changed function of the points value. So we'll say points value dot changed, and I'm just going to connect that to a function just like that, and we're going to get the new points. So whenever it's changed, whenever that int value with the amount of points is changed, we're going to connect into that, we're going to run a function, and we're going to get the new points. So however many points they currently have after it's been changed. And we'll just press enter and we will put a parenthesis right on that end to close it off. Uh, and then in here, so whenever it's changed, we want to save the points over the old value. So we'll say point store, we'll use that point store once again, colon set async, this saves the points. And then we're going to say our key is player.userID. So the user that we want to save it for, we pass that in as the first argument. And then the value that we want to save, new points. So if I had, let's just pretend if we come over here, 
to lighting and we'll create a new value. So let's say our points was zero and then we change that to one. Whenever it changes to one, it's going to connect to this event and it's going to set my value in the data store to one. So it's going to save our points whenever they're changed. Now this is super useful for us because now we're going to work on our give player system. So we want to give items to the other player with our hand to GUI. So I actually have an, I already have a video on the hand to GUI, which can be found in the description. And in that video is a link to a model right here. It's called, if we scroll down, it is called hand to GUI. And I made a video on that. So you can follow along with that, or you can just insert the model. I'm just going to show you by inserting the model, but by all means, go watch that video. It's in the description. Um, so right here, we have three things. We have a script, we have a remote event, and then we have a GUI. The GUI object needs to go under starter GUI so that the player can actually know, okay, we need to give the player something, the other player. Right here, this is the remote event. Make sure you put that under replicated storage. And the script, it could be under workspace or it could be under service script service. Just don't put it under replicated storage or anywhere that would normally run local scripts. So we put that uh, the script under service script service and we're just gonna go into this and edit it. So right now what this script does is it makes it so that whenever we give an item to another player, it will just give them the item, it'll give them the tool. It won't actually increment any points. But now that we have a point system for our cafe, we wanna increment points whenever somebody gives another player a tool. Um, along with that, we wanna add a check to make sure that they're not giving the tool to themselves because then they'd be able to exploit points. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'll create a new line after line one. And this is going to be the if statement that checks to make sure that you're not giving an item to yourself. So we'll say if player.name, so the player that's handing the item to the other player, is not equal to player name, it's not equal to the other player's name. So if I typed orange dude 4221 in here, since my name is orange dude 4221, this wouldn't run. The code in here wouldn't run um, because of this if statement that's protecting it from exploitation. So we'll just put an end after line four. And I'm just going to indent this. You can leave it if you want, but I like indenting my code to make it look nice. Um, and we just have it like that. So now the player can't give an item to themselves, but they can give it to other players. Uh, and we have one more line in this script, and then we're completely done. We just have to increment the points. We have to increase the points for the player that gave the item to show activity, to show that they're an active player and they give items to other players. So we'll just say player. So the player that's giving the item, so if I was in here and I was press give, this would be me, player.leaderstats, that folder that we created earlier, dot points, the value, dot value equals, and player.leaderstats, dot points, dot value plus, and right here you put however many points you wanna give when they give an item to another player. So if I wanted to give one point, like I did in the beginning of the video, when you saw that, I could do plus one. If I wanted to do two points, I could do two. If I want to do 100 points, go for it. You could do 100. But for me, I'm just going to do one since that's what most cafes do. And that's it. Now you have a fully functioning point system to keep track of activity in your players in your cafe. And just a quick note, guys, just in case you're receiving an error down here in the output that says something about API services not being enabled, you have to publish your game using Alt-P on Mac, or you can go to File, Publish to Roblox. Uh, and then you have to go to Game Settings, and then click on Options. And then you want to check off all of these boxes, but specifically for this video, you want to check off Enable Studio Access to API Services, and this will ensure that your data stores will work. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you learned something new today about scripting on Roblox. As always, I'll have the pastebin link with the code and the Roblox model link with all the assets shown in this video in the description, and I'll see you guys later.